Hey everybody, we're so glad to have you here. Thanks for joining us. It's been a great day so far. Hope you've gotten lots of great information. We're gonna get going right now with Veritas taking, taking the stage. So let's give a big, we just had our coffee welcome. Let me hear ya. For Anthony Cusimano. How you guys doing? Bet you didn't expect to see a millennial on stage for Veritas. It's a joke, you can laugh. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about data protection best practices in AWS using the Veritas stack. Something I think a lot of you guys are probably familiar with and are interested in learning more about today. So we're going to go over a few things as far as discussion topics are concerned. The first is the why, the sort of driving cause behind all of this. And then we're going to talk about strategy as how to deal with some of the issues we're seeing as far as on-prem, hybrid, and fully cloud-deployed environments. So first, data is literally everywhere. So as you can see, uh, everyone can read. 2016, we're at 39% data growth year over year. In 2017, we go up 10%. 2018, who knows? This number is growing exponentially fast. So if you don't get control of your data now, you might lose control of it in just a few years' time. And because data is growing so fast, we've also run into three major issues as far as kind of maintaining and managing it. The first being risks. Things like ransomware, malware, viruses, or God forbid, human error. Uh, that can present a huge problem to managing and understanding your data, as well as keeping control over it inside your infrastructure. You also have to deal with complexities. Where is it located? How much are we spending on it? Is it being replicated anywhere? Do we have a copy of our backups in case we lose them on our primary site? And lastly, there's cost. I don't have to tell you guys this. We all know that storage is expensive no matter where it's located. And because of this, data management is always, always an afterthought. What that means is we're, you know, we're aware that it's a problem, but it's such a tremendous problem to deal with that oftentimes we kind of put it on the back burner. or We don't think about it until it's too late. So there's four key management AWS use cases when it comes to uh, leveraging data inside of AWS. So the first is long-term retention. When you have backups or just information or storage in general, and you want to get it off your primary site because either one, you're getting out of there, you're tired of that physical location and all the dust that comes with it, or two, there's a mandate. I got to move into the cloud. A uh, company's moving in a different direction. We got to get there. Second big thing is you have to protect that information when it's inside of Amazon Web Services. Just putting it there is not enough. Uh, if you've ever had uh, a data threat or a loss through malware, or viruses, and you've called up Amazon or any of these guys, and you found out, oh, my data isn't protected. I have to do something with it. I have to protect it myself. Thirdly, if you're migrating your data to Amazon, there's no one easy turnkey solution to get you there. And lastly, when you're in Amazon and you want to recover there, what do you do about it? When it actually becomes time to put the rubber to the road and get your services and your applications stand up and running, are you ready to do so? So now that we've gone over the problem statement, let's jump into solutioning. And the first is leveraging AWS for long-term retention. So show of hands, how many of you guys have used more than one of these at a single time and are doing so right now? That's what I thought. Yeah, this is pretty common. Uh, and you, know, you raised your hand, we all deal with this. This is not exclusive to uh, one single company. Everyone goes through this. We even go through this at Veritas ourselves. And the issue is, old and new being used together comes at a cost. And those costs are things like tape and physical devices, they just don't perform to the expectations and standards that we expect in this, this new day and age of technology. And the second is cloud can often be expensive. Moving things there, bringing things back, if you don't have the right strategy to get your data in the cloud, it can end up costing two, three more times than you'd expect when it comes time to actually restore, recover, or bring something back. So basically, we at Veritas saw this gap you're seeing in the middle here, and we came up with a strategy around it. That strategy is our uh, long-term retention integration to AWS through Veritas. So over on the far left, you have your workload applications. These are your day-to-day -day devices, the things you're looking to protect, things like Oracle, SQL, virtual machines. Adjacent to that, we have our Flex Appliance. Now, this is a brand new Veritas offering that basically gives you the ability to stand up master and media net backup servers through Docker containers all on one box. So you can truly scale up and scale out as your needs see fit when it comes to protecting your infrastructure. But keeping things on the Flex Appliance can be expensive, especially when you're talking about terabytes and terabytes, or hundreds of terabytes, if not petabytes of data. So that's where our Access Appliance comes in. Now, this guy, we call him cheap and deep. 
but really he's fantastic at what he is. He's a secondary storage device for not only your backups, but your archives, and even some easy to access, easy to use applications. So access basically becomes the new stopping point for all of your backups, with the Flex Appliance kind of becoming that buffer, that starting point for your data recovery strategy. So we back up all the workloads with our Flex Appliance, and then we move them into our Access Appliance for long-term retention. Now, this guy can start anywhere from 636 terabytes all the way to 2.6 petabytes in a single box. But that's not enough, right? If we don't want to keep something on-prem, or we want to replicate out, or we want to move to the cloud, Access is intelligent enough to look at your backups, to look at your archives, and look at your data and say, if this thing hasn't been touched in six months' time, let's tear it off to the cloud. We're going to magically move it over, your end users are not going to be any of the wiser, but we're going to free up space, not only on the Flex appliance, but on the Access appliance, and ship it all off to S3 or Glacier for that long-term retention. Now, the real magic of this strategy comes in when it comes time to recover, because backup is never enough, right? We always want to come back and make sure we have a strategy when it comes time to actually get our information back. Access talks directly to Flex, talks directly to Net Backup. When you need to recover a file or a VM or an object or anything, all you have to do is manage it through Net Backup. One single call can bring it right back from the cloud to access to net backup to your end user. So at restore time, there's no surprises and there's no fuss as far as getting your data back. So that's really our strategy when it comes to long-term retention. I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Now we're going to talk about migrating and recovering apps in Amazon Web Services. So we talked about backup. But when it comes time to talk about migration, there's three things you really need to consider. Full automation. I'm talking one click to get you from point A to point B. No networking. No copy pasting, no command lining, one single click to get you stood up and running inside your web infrastructure. Second, you've got to be fast. If it is one click, but it takes two days, it's no good. If you need to be fully up and running in your cloud environment, you're going to want to go with our solution. So we want to get you there quicker, and we want to get you up and running faster. And the way we do that is through our Veritas Resiliency Platform, or what we call VRP. Now, over on the left is a traditional data center. It could be a private cloud. It could be you know, a VMware stack, whatever hypervisor you imagine. We have three lightweight VMs that are always running in tandem in this environment. These VMs basically communicate with our cloud infrastructure that has three adjacent VMs. So it's three VMs on-prem, three in the cloud. They're constantly learning, adapting, and gathering all the churn and change inside your on-prem infrastructure. They're taking that information, and they're converting it to something that Amazon can use. So we put it right in an S3 bucket. Once we move that information into the bucket, we then convert it into the AMIs and the EBS volumes that we need to recover that, that infrastructure or those applications in the Amazon environment. And the great thing about this is, and you'll actually see this in a demonstration in a minute, is we can do this so effortlessly and so quickly with a single click that your entire infrastructure will look almost identical. The only change being the format that the virtual machines have taken in that Amazon environment but your end user should be none the wiser as far as the network, how they connect, or how the infrastructure plays together. So we actually proved this uh, with Kyocera, who uh, we lowered their operational cost by 60% by migrating all of their information to the cloud through the Veritas Resiliency Platform. So I'm going to go ahead and pop over to my tablet over here. And what you guys are seeing right now is actually uh, our Veritas Resiliency Platform. I'm basically remoted into the IP address of one of those virtual machines we were talking about in that infrastructure slide. Now, from here, we can do all kinds of things. We can basically see right now we're replicating from uh, you know, Cupertino to uh, Pune, DC. But we can go from anywhere to anywhere, on-prem to on-prem, on-prem to cloud. You name it, we can get you there. Now, once you've set up your basic infrastructure inside the resiliency platform, you can come over to our assets view and then pop into resiliency groups. And you can start to define what you want to protect. And the way I like to think about this is like Lego blocks. You have your smallest block as a resiliency group. So if I click into this guy here, you can kind of get a high-level overview of exactly what we're replicating from, our, from one data center to the other. Now, right now, we basically have a, uh, uh, we have a, a pretty, pretty fast recovery readiness. We're at 100% sync data. We've got about a minute and 12 seconds of lag for a 10 gigabyte VM. So we have one VM we're replicating from site to site. Now, if we wanted to, I could click this migration button, and we could migrate from our on-prem into our secondary data store. That would basically be a very graceful movement, turning off data center A and turning on the virtual machine at data center B. Takeover is the nuclear option. So when you've actually lost network connectivity or you have to go through a disaster recovery scenario, that's when you click takeover. We're basically saying, I don't care about my primary data center. It's hosed anyway. Let's get up and running at our secondary location. 
Now, the real magic comes from our rehearsal and cleanup rehearsal buttons. What these guys allow you to do is run through an entire rehearsal of the order of operations we'd go through at the time of a migration or disaster recovery, but in a fenced off network. So it won't have any impact to your on-prem or your disaster recovery environment. So you can basically stand up and run quick and easy. Now, this is one Lego brick, like I mentioned before. This is just one virtual machine. Where things really start to get interesting is with resiliency plants. Once we build out those individual bricks, then we can come in here and build something meaningful. With a pretty easy to use workflow editor, we can basically take all the operations you saw earlier, that migration, that takeover, rehearsal, cleanup rehearsal, start, stop, and we can drag and drop all these different features into our timeline here and even inject things like manual operations or custom scripts and really build out a custom runbook that, ex that explicitly meets your infrastructure's needs. And once you've built this, you can put this on a rehearsal plan as well. So it's very easy to test your entire disaster recovery or migration strategy with a single click. And that is pretty much the resiliency platform. I'm going to go ahead and move back to the slide deck now. So the last thing I want to talk to you guys about today is post-migration after you've moved into the cloud and you have those machines there. Like I mentioned before, you are responsible for protecting your data in the cloud. No one's going to do it for you. Show of hands, who's used this before? Who knows who this is? OK. I know where my admins are. So this is how you create a snapshot in Amazon through the Amazon command line. It's elegant. It's efficient. It works. Why mess with something that works, right? Because of that, we've basically come up with a great way to have one interface that can protect all of your in-cloud infrastructure, including some on-prem applications as well, through one single application. So what you see on the right is called CloudPoint. It's running in a Docker container, and it's live 24-7. It's very lightweight. It consumes almost zero resources compared to every other application out there. And what it does is it hooks into all of your cloud infrastructure. It hooks into all your on-prem infrastructure. And it becomes the single management orchestrator for your snapshot policy needs. So you can create policies that will protect VMs, applications like SQL, Oracle, RDS. You can also protect file systems and volumes as well, all through the single application by creating one policy and applying it to your entire infrastructure in AWS. Now we can take it a step further. It's not just snapshot management. We also offer features like classification, being able to go through a snapshot and find information, things that might be tied to GDPR or personally identifiable information that you might need to scrub from that, that in-cloud infrastructure. We can also get you granular recovery, because a lot of times you don't want to restore an entire VM just for a Word document, right? So we can do that as well. And I think this product definitely shows better than it tells. So once again, I'm going to switch back over to my tablet. And what you're looking at here is an actual cloud point environment running inside a cloud. Uh, basically, we have a container running inside AWS. If I pop into our dashboard here, take a look at our hosts, and I filter by AWS, you can see all of our machines that we're using inside our AWS environment. Now, this one right here, this is my personal CentOS VM. Got 55 snapshots on it right now, but there's none that have been taken recently. If I want to protect this VM, I can click Policies. Now, everything on the left is stuff we've already pre-created. I want something specific to protect this VM. So I'm going to go back to our dashboard. I'm going to create a brand new policy. Give it a name. I'm going to choose, I want to keep five copies at any one time. And we're going to run this daily at 12 AM. And we're just going to snap at the host level. I click Save, and the policy was added. So now if I go back to our dashboard, I go back to that CentOS AMI running here in our EC2 instance, click Policies, and assign this plan. I'm done. This machine is protected. A snapshot's going to be taken every day at 12 AM. We're going to maintain five copies perpetually. So it's, we're going to expire the sixth copy, and we're going to take a new one every day. And the great thing about this is we have snapshots already available on this. We can restore directly over the VM. So if something happens like you're ransomed because Bitcoin miners have hijacked your machine, yes, this has actually happened to someone I know, you can, you can quickly click the most recent snap, 
click restore, and you have a couple different options. You can overwrite the existing machine. You can write to the original location in case the existing machine was corrupted. Or you can go to a new location. And all you have to do is provide a different subnet, and that machine will be created inside that subnet. We'll just go ahead and do that. And we'll just put it in this subnet here. And we're good to go. It's often creating that new machine using the sa same AMI properties that it had on the previous one, basically creating a replica of that CentOS VM inside that subnet. So that is CloudPoint. And what I do want to mention here is that uh, if you're interested in this, if this catches your fancy, we do offer a 10 terabyte free trial that is perpetual. So you have up to 10 terabytes of protection using this today. All you have to do is go to the AWS Marketplace, build out one of these guys. It's super quick. It's like 10 clicks max. Just click in next to the, uh, the wizard. And you'll be presented with this view. You log in. You point it to your, uh, your access key, secret key. And it will automatically populate all the machines there. And you can start protecting your machines today for free up to 10 terabytes. We can return to the slide deck. So to quickly review what we've gone over today, Veritas not only solves for things like long-term retention, a tiered out cloud strategy, but also the migration, disaster recovery, and protection of your infrastructure and information, both in and out of the cloud. And if you have any questions about what you've seen here today, I will be over in our pod. Feel free to reach out. If you want to see anything further, I can always play with my tablet here and do another demo for you guys. Uh, but thanks for your time. I don't know if we have time for questions or? I need mic. Yeah, we've got a couple of minutes. If anyone wants to ask a question, just raise your hand, and I'll happily bring you the microphone. Anybody? Going once, going twice. You're, you've just brilliantly informed them. They have no questions. That's what I try to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Anthony.